final example, f and g are one-to-one -one functions. Now prove that f composed with g inverse is equal to g inverse composed with f inverse. So this might be a little daunting at first. These are weird symbols. We're not used to using these sorts of things. So if that's the case, let's remind ourselves from composition, f composed with g acting on x is equal to f of g of x. Now, I said before, it makes things always, always, always easier to see it in that format. So what we want to show is we want to show that g inverse composed with f inverse would be g inverse composed with f inverse, g inverse on f inverse on x. So we want to show that this guy here is an inverse to that guy over there. That's what we're trying to prove, that f composed with g inverse, we know by the definition of how this symbol works, by how inverse f composed with g inverse acting on f composed with g is going on x is going to just leave us with as if we'd done nothing because we're putting an inverse on something. So we want to show that this means the exact same thing as this right here. So let's just try it out. So we'll set it up like this, f composed with g inverse, acting on f composed with g, acting on x. Okay, so what does that become? Well, we know that f composed with g, acting on x, is the same thing as f of g of x. All right, what is f composed with g inverse? Well, we know from over here what we did here that we can break that into g inverse, acting on f inverse, acting on whatever's going into it. What's going into it here? What's going into it here? is this whole thing, right? So it's going to be g inverse acting on f inverse acting on f acting on g acting on x. And then we close up all of those parentheses. So that's a little bit confusing, but hey, hey, we're seeing inverses right next to function, right? f inverse acting on f acting on whatever the heck is in there just cancels out and gets us right back to what we originally had in there. So f inverse acting on f, that cancels out and we get g inverse acting on whatever was in there, which was g of x. So g inverse acting on g of x, exact same thing, we get down to x. So hey, we've proved it. g inverse composed with f inverse is how we create f composed with g inverse. Great, we've proved it. All right, hope you've got a much better idea of how inverses work at this point. They can be a little bit confusing, but you've got that method to be able to guide you through it. Just follow it really carefully, step by step. The danger is if you break from those steps and do something else, you'll, that's where you can make mistakes. If you really understand what's going on, you don't even have to use that method, but it really is the standard method, so it's a good idea to stick with it just because it's what a lot of other people are used to using, and you can find it in a lot of textbooks. All right, we'll see you at educator.com later. Bye.